this is so exciting. <laughs> so, for most of my life, I've been obsessed with finding the perfect partner. And I've had a few partners. That's tricky, too, because <laughs> you're changing, they're changing. <laughs> right. In other words, it's a lot of pressure on them. Yeah. Yeah, so I've had a lot of partners, and I finally figured out that I was looking for love in all the wrong places. Maybe. But it's all right. It's all right to have sifted and sorted and know what you want. But you're all hearing this a little differently today. So to find a pleasing match, you have to be pleased. You can't find a pleasing match from a place of displeasure. <laughs> Can you feel that? You have to be pleased. So, dissatisfaction with a partner never gets you to a pleasing partner, as you have been discovering. And so, the big question is how can I be pleased? And you want to add to it how can I be pleased in an unpleasant situation? Well, mind control. <laughs> A desire to feel good a desire to feel good that is so strong that it out does everything else I so want to feel good that I'm gonna feel good even though so much about you bothers me <laughs> now that's like a first step in that isn't it but a lot of people think that a terrible relationship is better than no relationship at all but it isn't because a terrible relationship just for most of you because most of you are observing more than you are tending to your vibration just observe the things that you are not appreciating and then you can't get to where you want to be from there so how are you going to find how are you going to be a match to what you're looking for what is it that you're looking for rather than talking about the things talk about what it feels like what does it feel like to be inside that relationship well, what I did... We asked you a very yeah. clear question. Okay. Well, I, I, feel, I feel happy and, and, and satisfied. Why does anybody ever feel satisfied? What is the definition of satisfaction? We'll tell you. It's moving in the direction of desire. In fact, that's the only place that satisfaction comes from. Having lived life and ask for something and now to allow yourself to be a cooperative component to what you've asked for, that's what satisfaction is. So what satisfying, happy. So conjure it, fill it in a little more. They can't just be words that are either empty or words that mean the opposite of what you're feeling. You know when most people talk about love when they really want some? When they really don't feel love, but they really want love. Well, you can't get there from there. That's looking for love in all the wrong places. We've been saying that for a long time, but it's not looking for love in all the wrong places. It's looking for love from the wrong point of attraction. It's looking for love without it. When you're never without it. You're never without it. Esther's in love with the flight attendant. <laughs> and with the people who talk to him. And with Michelle and with the girl who sat next to her. That's how you fill that in. You see what we're getting at? Yes. And I've been, over the last three years, I've not been in a relationship. And I have been focused in, on meditating and following my satisfaction. And right now, I... But you I, see, you led with something. I've not had what I want. And so the lack, the feeling of I don't have it, is the feeling which is your point of attraction right now and then you double down and I've been trying you said I've been meditating I've been doing all the right things but I don't have it I'm not getting it I don't see it coming and we say what are you gonna do about that you, you got to get off that you can't get to where you want to be from there well one of the things that was interesting is that the the desire for it seems to have diminished like I don't think about it hardly at all because I'm in, enjoying my life right now and so well, then this conversation is really out of balance with your life isn't it I just I just wait, wait, wait. this, if, this is it, really worth thinking about because here you are the billboard about us says infinite intelligence not really but <laughs> we like you to think of us like that 
an opportunity really to focus in a way that you'll get a lot of leverage and your desire is strong it's in your vortex good we don't mean anything we're not trying to make a big point of the and yet and yet <laughs> it feels to you like you need to identify the problem uh, you need to explain it a little more fully really explain it fully because you have this desire you know something's off that you haven't yet gotten what you want you know something's off with that so you're trying to explain it so that somebody can tell you what you're doing wrong and it isn't about doing something wrong it's about not doing the only thing that lets it in and what lets it in always feels good so you know that any conversation you're having any focus that you're giving that makes you feel lonely or disappointed or impatient is on the wrong track so whenever that happens don't do that change the subject somehow and that's what you've been doing a lot of that's why it feels to you like maybe you don't want it as much as you once did but you know why you think that because most of you we love you so much but hear this and feel this most of you think that when you're feeling angst about something that that's when you're focused upon your desire because that's what focusing on your desire feels like to most of you mm -hmm. It feels like angst and then it feels normal so then when you meditate and you do those things that makes the angst go away you think oh I must not want it anymore no you're finally allowing it because most people think that they have to struggle and strain there's no pain without gain is what humans tell one another and that's a big flawed premise there's no gain with pain the pain put a lot of gain over there you're just not gonna get any of it until you stop focusing on the pain and humans want to say I would focus on the pain if you'd give me some gain and we say you can't get the gain you don't get off the pain and you say that's jacked up <laughs> but it is consistent it is the way that Jerry and Esther would go to a restaurant and quite often they went to the same restaurants in lots of different cities year after year after year and they were really good tippers and they got to be known as that and people would tell each other and then when Jerry and Esther would go to a familiar restaurant especially when they were in their hometown they could see that they were being fought over by the waiters everybody wanted them because they were hoping for that big tip and quite often Jerry would say as he would give them a proportionate tip and then an extra hundred dollars in our family we have a tradition when we find a waiter that's like our very very favorite we give them something extra and you're it and so that had happened in this restaurant several times and so now there's a waiter that apparently won the arm wrestle and is <laughs> waiting on Jerry and Esther and he is really stating his case of need haven't had a good lover in a long 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 time no that was your case is expressing that to Jerry and Esther and so they enjoyed the meal they got good service they didn't have much conversation because they weren't a match they weren't a match they weren't a match they weren't a match because he still believes in pleading and pointing out in trying to elicit someone to save him rather than being a vibrational match to what he wants and so Jerry gave him a 20% tip and didn't offer the other and Jerry said to Esther when he walked away he doesn't get how it works does he and most people don't get how it works most people think that there's someone that holds the pie and that if you plead a needy enough case that some arbitrator that is splitting the pie up with some sort of rationale will give you the slice of pie that you need but it law of attraction matches things the absence of something wanted matches the absence of something wanted matches the absence of something wanted you've got to find the presence of something wanted and make it really active in your vibration on a regular basis and then boom an airplane full of nice people or lovers wouldn't that be something so I don't have to make lists and do visualizations. you made the list that seems you made the list and you did the visualization you lived the visualization you know what it's like to be in a situation you don't like and you automatically launch this rock of desire the upheaval of what you don't want put what you do want in great clarity 
in the vortex. Isn't it understood? In other words, if someone is mean to you and you feel broken and you're crying, isn't it understood by any reasonable person what it is you want? Kindness and love and harmony and matching and more and more and more. And so it's over there and your inner being's all over it and the law of attraction is too. What are you going to do now, 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 now to match that? instead of the absence of it. I just want to have fun. That's what, yeah. I don't want to worry about it or think about it. I yeah. just want to have fun. We know that, but you got to practice that because your tendency is to worry about it. Your habit is to worry about it and to discuss it with other people. And I like to be productive. <laughs> well, when you discover the leverage of aligning with this vortexual energy, that's the energy that creates worlds and you have access to it flowing right through you toward whatever you want. That's leverage. That's productivity, but it's productivity because you're a vibrational match. It's not productivity because you're trying to fix something that's broken. You can't get to where you want to be by trying to rub out its opposite. Rubbing out its opposite just holds you over there with its opposite. Yeah. Yeah. We know you heard. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.